They say controversy is good for advertising, but what happens if you make enough controversial changes to your game in such a short time that people start to consider it dead? This is the story of the 10th season of Fortnite Battle Royale, and I'm here to defend it. Season X, the big one, the final boss of quote unquote bad Fortnite seasons. Chapter 1 has long been considered to be Fortnite's golden poster boy. Season X is like a big ol' sore on it. Now I may just be a dirty dirty casual, but Season X is actually one of my most played Chapter 1 seasons. I loved it! But to discuss it, I think we need to start with this biggest point of contention. The Mech, the Brute, the Destroyer of Sweats. The Brute was a rather massive two-player mech vehicle with built-in stomping, shotguns, and missiles. If that sounds kinda absolutely insane, well it was. And people hated it. So much so that hashtag remove the mech was trending worldwide on Twitter for several days. And, well, yeah, they were too much. For the first week. In every single subsequent update, the mech was nerfed and nerfed into the ground until it literally just self-destructed as soon as it hit the ground. Visual updates to make it easier to spot, reductions in how much ammunition it holds, the removal of its ability to harvest materials, cooldown time charges, and so many more nerfs that the mech in August 2019 and the mech in September 2019 are basically two different beasts. I think that people are totally justified to dislike the mech. But I think a lot of people just remember those crazy first few days before it got nerfed and incorrectly assume it remained like that for the entire season. Maybe they even quit due to that and never came back despite the changes. I think its reworked counterpart, the Salvaged Brute from Chapter 2 Season 8, is a much more balanced vehicle. It's weaker, deals less damage, and always spawns in the same two spots so it can be prepared for and destroyed before anyone even gets in. Another point of controversy for Season X was the map. As beloved as the Chapter 1 island is in retrospect, a lot of people were getting kind of bored of it after two years. Plus, after years of updates, it was becoming pretty full, and Season X only added onto that with its rift zones. Now personally, I actually really loved the Season X map but a lot of the community didn't. And I think it was this reaction that dissuaded Epic from radically changing the following Chapter 2 island much during its two years of updates. Pretty much every Chapter 2 biome or POI edition would be reverted or replaced after just a season or two, and I think that's because Epic were afraid of repeating the history here. Now, this seems like a good time to talk about the Rift Zones. Rift Zones were a unique feature that haven't really been seen since, where POIs were replaced by altered versions of themselves, or previous locations, with special attributes. The season kicked off with the return of Dusty Depot and the Factories. The Depot is the only Rift Zone to not have any special quirk, as it was introduced right at the start of the season. It was actually teased during the World Cup Finals, and this was a big deal. That's kind of strange considering it was such a mediocre POI. I mean, come on, man, it had three chests in Season 3. I think the actual Rift Zone part was the massive meteor that hung overhead, with a low gravity effect. This was a really cool spot, in fairness, although the loot was a bit of a nothing sandwich. Loot Lake also became a pseudo-Rift Zone, with the same low gravity effect around the exploding zero point. At this point, Loot Lake is so far removed from the original version that it's actually become a really good POI. Next came Tilted Town, an asset flip of Ghost Town from Save the World that is a Wild West version of Tilted Towers. The cool thing about this POI is that you couldn't build or break anything while inside of it, which made it very unique to fight in. The only issue was that if you got a mech inside, well, no one else stood a chance. Retail Row returned next, bringing with it the cube monsters from Fortnite Mares 2018. This area was really high risk, high reward, and I totally respect that. It was a really cool way of doing the zombies that wasn't super over the top. But I know that for the diehard Retail Row community, they probably weren't too happy about the infestation. The Soccer Stadium's Rift Zone malfunctioned, and it just kind of erased it from existence, and yeah, that, that one was pretty bad. However, it did have a unique forest item type that can't be found anywhere else, known as Glitched, which would cycle through various foraged items, including the elusive Hop Rocks, and Shadow Stones. Pandora was the next Rift Zone POI. The first of two collab Rift Zones, it brings the desert from Borderlands into the game, with shield recharging and... Cash? Yeah, I don't know either. 
The next rift zone is one of my faves. It's the Cube Island from Season 6, but merged with the Motel landmark. Two of my favourite unnamed locations, and it floated around the map each day for the rest of the season. I think that was pretty cool. Even if it didn't really have a gimmick beyond just being a floated POI, it was still damn cool. The next two rift zones arrived in the same update and are both incredibly controversial. Moisty Palms and Gracie Grove. Moisty was a mashup of Paradise Palms and Moisty Mire, where crouching would turn the player into a random prop, and Greasy Grove was Taco Takeover of the original, with a taco time effect every 45 seconds that made everyone dance, kind of like a buggy bomb. Okay, I can't really defend those rift zones that much. Greasy Grove was always one of my favorite POIs, and more taco time was undoubtedly hilarious, FUCKING TACO TIME! It did make me avoid dropping here. And Moisty Palms? Well, at least they brought the prison back. Tilted Town was replaced by the other collab POI, Gotham City, where Glider Redeploy is always on. I'm not a huge Batman guy, but I really liked this rift zone. The Glider Redeploy and high population led to some fast-paced action and quick battles, which was super fun and pretty much exactly what you want in a tilted type POI. And finally, the Starry Suburbs, a modernised take on the old set of ruined buildings that used to be in the same spot when the game first launched. This is easily my favourite rift zone, it's such a cute, quaint little suburb, and the Falling Stars mechanic that gave really good loot was really cool. And that's the Season X map. Like I said, I do totally understand why people were not too happy with the map at this time. And with all the chaotic rift zones and messy locations, it may have been a bit overwhelming. But personally, I absolutely adored it. I remember when the Chapter 2 map was first leaked. I was genuinely heartbroken to be leaving this one. But hey, Chapter 2 ended up being my favourite map, so maybe change is good. Another common misconception of the season was that the loot pool was insanely bloated and cluttered. It makes sense, right? It's the last season before they hit the reset button in Chapter 2, with 10 seasons of items building up and filling the loot pool with more and more weapons. Well, actually, it wasn't even as bad as I remembered. They vaulted a ton of stuff at the start of the season and introduced some legitimately really well-balanced items. One of my all-time favourite utility items is the Shield Bubble, which just creates a nice shield to protect you from gunfire for a short time, and that was introduced this season. There's also other stuff like the automatic sniper rifle, which was you know, pretty bad at the start, but they buffed it later on. Compare it to Season 9, which introduced a new weapon or item in 12 of the 13 updates, many of which are absolutely insane, like the airstrike or just kind of fillery, like the proximity grenade launcher. Suddenly Season X looks a lot more balanced, right? Sure, there was still some filler. The Zappa Trap comes to mind, but overall the BR team actually did a really great job of keeping the loot pool balanced this season. I suppose people tend to overlook stuff like that when the mech is running rampant. The Battle Pass! This is easily the best Battle Pass in Fortnite history, hands down. You start off the pass with Catalyst, a fantastic female variant of Drift with tons of awesome styles, and Exlord, a really cool variant of Rustlord with a scavenger, post-apocalyptic feel. Tilted Technique is a personal favourite of mine, especially the hooded styles. Yonder is an absolutely glorious remix of DJ Yonder. Sparkle Supreme and Eternal Voyager are both fantastic outfits with great style options, and closing out the pass is Ultima Knight, one of the best tier 100 skins to date. All they had to do to make the perfect battle pass was just remix skins from previous chapter 1 battle passes and make them better than ever before. It's just like a best hits for Fortnite battle passes. And the rest of the pass is jam packed full of fan service with lobby tracks, including the original theme music and a remix of the final showdown events theme, sprays depicting tilted towers and the superheroes from season four, the introduction of hands drawn 2D loading screens with some truly beautiful artwork and the adorable Kitsune back billing. The secret skin was the scientist, a member of the seven. He was so mysterious when he was introduced, but he would later be revealed to be one of the most charming and funny story characters in all of Fortnite. Plus his set is just really great. Also, shout out to you if you recognise the name Visitor Volta. That's a real throwback. The story of the season was really exciting. We had no idea what was in store for the future, with a mysterious space-time orb in the middle of Luke Lake, a new variant of the Visitor hacking mechs at Dusty Depot, and the meteor ominously floating overhead. Listening to the Visitor tapes towards the end of the season as the scientist put his plan into action was really exciting. The foreshadowing for the reveal of the Imagined Order, the bridge, and more in 2020 was really well done and it all culminated in perhaps one of the best live events ever made, the end. 
The end was truly a spectacle. We watched the rocket take off, just as it did in June 2018, before suddenly ripping a hole in the atmosphere. Joined by six other rockets, we finally introduced to the Seven, who took the meteor and slammed it straight into Loot Lake, causing a massive explosion that then imploded inward, sucking everything into nothing. And that was Fortnite, for two whole days. The website? Down. The Twitter? Empty. The world's eyes were on Fortnite and the mysterious black hole. It's a masterclass in hype and marketing that no game has ever come close to replicating. Hey, no game may ever come close to replicating. Fortnite was the number one worldwide trending topic on Twitter. It was a massive risk for Epic Games to shut down the servers of their most profitable IP for two whole days, but it paid off tremendously, and the numbers back that up. This season also came right after the World Cup final, so this would be the one to define the future of competitive Fortnite, and that happened with the introduction of the Fortnite Champion Series, a seasonal series of high-stakes tournaments with massive prize pools. FNCS would continue every season for the next three years before switching to a yearly event with seasonal qualifiers in 2023. Season X also had some really exciting events that many people probably don't even remember looking back but they were really great for keeping the season engaging and fun for me. There was the Combine, a really unique solo training mode by Epic themselves, which surprisingly never returned, and Zone Wars, a creative-focused event with a variety of now iconic Zone Wars maps to play with, cosmetic prizes and challenges. It might not seem like much, but stuff like this just goes a really long way for keeping a season fresh, and exciting. And considering there was already so much going on in VR with Rift Zones and the story, events like this are just the content cherry on the content cake. Well, that's season X. Have I changed your opinion on it? Probably not, but hey, I enjoyed it a lot, and that's my case for it being better than you remember. I, I mean, I might even put it in my top 10 Fortnite seasons of all time. Top 5, maybe. Please don't flame me on Twitter.